What's up? What's up? It is Friday, August 30th, 2024. This is Louisiana vs. All Y'all. I'm Jared Roser, and college football season has officially kicked off in Louisiana, including a couple of programs already getting their first wins of the season on Thursday night. I was at Yulman Stadium on Thursday with Tulane and a 52 to nothing opening of the John Summerall era against in-state southeastern Louisiana. And I think you know, a lot to to like about what you saw from the green wave. I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. You can also check out uh, this kind of week one preview episode of Podnas with Daniel Hawks that uh, we're recording on Friday where we'll kind of look back at the uh, the Tulane win, the ULM win, and look ahead to LSU and the Cajuns and some other stuff to watch around the country this weekend. But, I mean, starting uptown, again, 52 to nothing against southeastern Louisiana. It was not only the opening of the John Summerall era as head coach of the Green Wave, but also the opening of the Darian Mensa era at the helm of that offense, the redshirt freshman quarterback, uh, his first college game action. And and that was the big storyline. Uh, you saw all three of those two-lane quarterbacks that we talked about after the scrimmage with the little takeaways video. But Mensa took the first snaps and did really well, I think, you know, further – ran with his opportunity to be that first guy out there. He completed 10 of 20, uh, 10 of 12 passes for 205 yards, two touchdowns. Coach Summerall talked about afterward, really anticipated a lot of throws well, was was making throws before the throws were open, uh, just kind of anticipating what his receivers and the defense were doing. Darian talked a lot about his confidence level, and I think that's been evident with him anytime you've seen him through, I mean, throughout the lead up to earn this opportunity as well as throughout the game last night I thought you saw a lot of confidence in him from the team too early on with some of his third down conversions his second or third third down conversion uh, I mean they went empty set on a third and three and, and he hit Yul Keith Brown in stride eight yards downfield and just I mean made some nice plays both with his arm and legs and also again with his his mind and his handle on that game and that offense for a guy that was was in there for the first time and so really exciting for him also saw kind of a role developing for Ty Thompson, the transfer from Oregon. He only threw four passes, completed two of them for 17 yards, but his first couple of snaps, they immediately give it to him to go run. He ends up with four carries for 23 yards and two touchdowns. And so it seems like when they get down there inside the red zone, certainly inside the 10, you're going to see Ty Thompson and, and his big body and athleticism and some of the things he can do with his legs become uh, a big piece of this green wave offense. Um, I think one of the other really encouraging takeaways for Tulane just kind of leaving the stadium Thursday night was a 52, nothing win a shutout. The first time the green wave have had in, you know, a season opening shutout of an opponent in quite a while and all of these positive takeaways, but, both Summerall and the players on Thursday night were very emphatic of, you know, we played all right. This was not up to our standard. Going to take a win, be happy with a win, never not celebrate a victory because they're hard to come by in, you know, in, at this level of college football. But at the same time, they know Kansas State comes to town next week. They know they're up to Oklahoma in a couple of weeks and they know they have big goals in terms of a conference championship. And then you know, other things that could come into play from there. And so they're not satisfied with what they saw, particularly looking at a couple of penalties. They had a, a penalty on Southeastern's first third down uh, to start the game that extended the Lions drive and, and kind of put some pressure on the Tulane defense early. Uh, a couple of other untimely penalties and, and miscues, and uh, they got saved by another penalty at one point where uh, Dante Fleming let a, a punt return get away from him, uh, muffed, muffed the ball, but it ended up being a – a penalty against Southeastern and, and kind of saved that two lane miscue. And so a couple of different things, I know, you know, Tyler Grubbs talked about, he'd like to see that defense tackle a little bit better. Coach Summerall talked about wanting to get a little bit more pressure on the quarterback. And I'll talk more about Eli Sawyer and that lions team here in a second as well. But all in all for the, the first game of a new era in terms of your new coaching staff, your new quarterback, and a lot of new faces in general on both sides of the ball. I thought an encouraging start and then that much better to hear that kind of objectivity coming out and realizing that there are bigger things in front of this team and that they're not satisfied. And so I do look to them to, to play a lot better next Saturday morning when the Wildcats are in Yulman Stadium for what should be a really notable game on a national scale. Um, but I, I like a lot of the takeaways from from what you saw on 
on Thursday night as well. Um, I mean, a lot of guys getting involved on both sides of the ball. Rayshon Pleasant, the the young, maybe not so young anymore, uh, cornerback from West Monroe, blew the game open with an interception return for 100 yards right before halftime. It was 14 nothing at that point. The Lions were trying to threaten and slice that lead in half, and instead Rayshon Pleasant blows the game open. I thought Cameron Hamilton, the uh, defensive lineman from – Zachary was big, had a, a tackle for loss and a forced fumble, the forced fumble that kind of ended that first Southeastern drive and, and got that defense off the field. And as much as they want to see that defense play better, I think what we've seen leading up to the season, you know, talking to players, seeing the way that the performance went in that scrimmage that I had a chance to take in live, seeing this season opener, that as much as the defense is still kind of coming into its own and, and finding its – um you know, finding its stride, gelling together with a lot of new transfers there and and trying to get to what it hopes its ultimate identity will be. The early identity is even when there is some bend, they find a way to buckle down and make timely plays and get off the field, as you saw with the uh, the forced fumble by Cameron Hamilton recovered by Sam Howard and then the Rayshon Pleasant interception and really nice return where you saw his return skills. They're going to make him a big piece of this uh, this special teams unit as well for the Green Wave. And so... I thought positive again to to see that as the the opener. You score touchdowns on six of your first seven possessions, and then add the Jacob Barnes uh, field goal late, and so score on seven of the eight possessions. And the the two drives that South Southeastern was able to sustain a little bit, you come up with big plays to get off the field. Um, we'll see next Saturday morning against Kansas State. Obviously, a much different opponent, and that'll be. A big, uh, a big test for for Tulane as a whole, as well as Darren Mensa, as as exciting as as some of the things we've seen thus far have been. You know, looking at it specifically from the the Mensa standpoint, Thursday night and the lead up to the season, all those things are really almost kind of like a a first progress report of first quarter, where you're not even to the the first quarter grade yet, or the you know the semester grade, or or full season. And so, very early on, uh, just kind of getting a feel for this team. But I think that early feel in terms of what you saw on the field, starting out on Thursday night, as well as the way that they um, kind of reflected on it in the immediate wake of that game, was all really positive. Again, for Southeastern, uh, you know, you you hope those guys, another Louisiana program right there. Uh, across the lake out in Hammond that they shake back strong. Um, you know, Tulane will be certainly one of the tougher opponents that they face, a team that is a, you know, a realistic G5 playoff contender type team. And so um, you get that early test against a high quality program there. Eli Sawyer, who had the chance to start this game and we saw it, you know, two of the three quarterbacks for the Lions, Eli Sawyer completed 14 of 19 passes for 99 yards and uh, and had that interception right before half. Up until that interception, I thought he'd played fairly well. You saw some flashes there with uh, with Martin, the the running back, gaining sixty eight yards on uh, on thirteen carries. You you had some some nice plays. Darius Lewis in the passing game. They had the the tight end Kate Collier. I thought made a couple of nice catches. Big plays in the return game from uh, from Brandon Hayes and company. And so. Um, you saw moments for that Lions team as well to be in, encouraged. Caleb Proctor, I thought, was big on the front line. He ended up leading the team with six tackles, had some some moments where he was able to create uh, some nice disruptive push from the middle. <clears throat> KK Reno had a couple of big tackles too, the former Catholic New Iberia standout, and that list kind of goes on in terms of what you saw from uh, from the Lions. But – Again, we're judging two Louisiana teams against one another, so every positive for one is a, a negative for the other. Um, as much as you want to see more pass rush and, and better tackling from Tulane, give some credit and some spots to to Southeastern for holding its own against that level of competition. And, uh, you know, the same time, kind of when there were some some issues for Tulane um, and, and they had to, to kind of manage their way off the field and, and get out of some things. Southeastern was doing a good job in some spots, applying some pressure. We'll continue to watch these teams throughout the season. Certainly next weekend, that aforementioned Tulane versus Kansas state game is one of the biggest games to watch, not only on a statewide level, but on a national level. And so make sure you keep up with Louisiana versus all y'all hoping to get down to Yulman at some point during this week and do some more midweek interviews with the green wave and coach Summerall and company and planning to be in that number on Saturday morning against the 
Wildcats for what should be a real fun one uh, scheduled to kick off at 11. As always, I'm Jarrett Roser, and I appreciate you all taking the time to tune in. This is Louisiana vs. All, y'all, and until next time, you all have a great one. Thank you.